this is one of the uh, most important reasons why, you know, when you know, you always go to the end of mind. You always go to the matrix and the end of mind. That's the rule across the board, around the world. And we are the only people that violate that rule. And this came out after mm -hmm. that. Uh, this book was published after Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an older dictionary, so don't dismiss it because it's good. Right. But the deal of it, the whole key is really knowing how to read. That's the deal. Our people don't know how to read. They don't know how to read dictionaries because they, they're not trained. Because, right. you know, people branded black, they only deal with belief systems. They don't deal with facts. You give them math, and they get insulted. Right. Like you're attacking God, Jesus, Allah, right. Moses, and everything because you're talking facts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, civilized people deal with mathematics, facts, geometry, geography, Agreed. trigonometry. So-called black people deal with beliefs that they change every two years. Okay. But you've got to remember, branded people don't have culture. Agreed. They live dead culture, which is why we got so much death and destruction. Okay. They call it spirituality. We both do do, but we can fight. So people, you know, ain't, ain't going to come up and say, man, you know, you don't know what you're talking about because we come out. Come out our gear, pop the nine, and do all that kind of stuff. We won't. You know what I mean? I mean, it's the truth. True. And when it really boils down, you know, we're sensitive when people bust us on our ignorance, but we are ignorant. And it is. You know, you ain't gonna fix a problem until you admit the problem exists. Any dictionary that 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 they took the trouble to make a hard cover, ninety percent of the time it's unabridged. Okay. And the way that you can tell an unabridged dictionary, um, <clears throat> these are the two words you look for, like scholars, because you know the operations of the Wiggum party and the alterations of, you know, with connotative linguistics. So the first thing you do when you look at an old dictionary, go you know, or use bookstore, old bookstore, you immediately go to the word black, and then you see if they properly classified it as an adjective. Scholar knows it's not a proper noun, it's not a person, place, thing, or idea, mm -hmm. except people that don't, can't read, you know. And then it will go into its etymon. You don't need to go any further than that. Any scholar knows that. But people who can't read don't know to recognize that. This is why people can always get cheated in contracts, get cheated in, cheated in mortgages, get treated, cheated in stock, and every because they can't read. But it don't mean they can't pronounce the word. Do you understand? Now there's eight parts of speech. Eight parts of speech, right? Mm -hmm. So it's eight parts of speech. And so now we got your babies here, mm -hmm. your little girl and your little boy. Now they got to grow up in this world competing, and you're the father, and if you don't know that it's eight parts of speech, and they're supposed to get it in the third grade, what chance do they have to compete with the real world when they can't even read, but yet they can pronounce words? And they wouldn't even know that they can't read because they think that because they can pronounce the words and do some ebonics that they got it covered. Right. Now, notice that we haven't even gone into any linear entries at all. We haven't gone to any definition. We just going to the matrix because you got to know who the mom is because the mom is the truth of the word. That's what an etymology is. The etymon is what the true origin, meaning and definition of a word, including indicators of morphology from one language to another. That's basic rule of reading, third grade stuff. Now, the reason why most people are people don't know because they weren't taught, not because they're dumb. But if, if you weren't taught, you don't know that you don't know. Oops. And so we grow up in what you call connotative linguistics, and that's link, connotative, and this is the other rule. One of the first rules. Third grade mm -hmm. grammatication is denotation, connotation, and learn that rule. Denotation is where the word or definitions that absolutely apply to the word in fact. Connotations are fads or misuses of words, but is generally accepted, but in fact is not what the word means. Not unlike when, when Mike did the record, you know, the bad album years ago. Bad in, in that connotative means good or slick, smart, tight. But, but in its denotation, it means negative. Now, um, so like when most of our people, you talk to most of our people, and they'll acknowledge Negro, black, colored, coon, shine, nigga, and don't know that they're all 
categorized as nom de gear. But you, you say nom de gear, they wouldn't associate because they don't know that that's nom de gear because they don't know better. But a scholar immediately knows they're nom de gear, mm -hmm. and it's not even a debate. It's not even an issue with them. It's not like it's like saying to somebody, uh, two and two is four, and they, and they got to go through some great effort. It's, it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Two and two is four. Oh, all right, four. No big deal. To us, you ain't got to go through no spiritual definition of two and two is four. Black, Negro, color, they're nom de gear. That means their pseudonyms are put on people that have been denationalized. Anybody around the planet knows that. Our people don't know that. So therefore, here we are with this problem. And so now we're approaching people who have been subjugated to this mentality for generations, and it appears that you're either giving them something new or you're countering their beliefs when you're actually restoring something that already belonged to them, and they're the only ones that don't recognize it. So you can understand how the rest of the civilized world has problems with so-called black people because they don't know how to come at you. Because they don't know how you're going to respond. One minute you're sensitive, one minute you're supportive, you hurt each other with petty stuff, yet, yet evil stuff come to you from European policemen and stuff like that, stomp your babies, you know what I mean, rape your women, and you all march and pray. Brother, look at you wrong, you wanna shoot them. You know, they know we have that mentality. You, you, because we're sick, but we don't know that we're sick. Mm -hmm. But anyway, getting back to point, let's, let's, let's um, deal with fundamental etymology and show you how simple this stuff is. So now you look at black, right? And you see it's an adjective, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing you do. You, all, you always classify it. The classification of part of speech is also called the matrix, which means it's mother. Matrix means womb. Mm -hmm. All right? Then you look for the etymon, and you know that they always push the etymology down the bottom because they don't want you to need to learn. Mm -hmm. And so what is black? It is what? What do you see right there? Middle mm -hmm. English. Black. Mm -hmm. Old English, right? Black, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's derived from Old High German, and black all really actually means pale and shiny. And our people think it means this, don't they? So when they be doing their Black Lives Matter and stuff like that, they're really saying the pale man matters, we don't. And they don't even know they just said that. They just cast a spell against themselves, thinking that they're doing some kind of spiritual rally, uplifting their people, and the rest of the civilized world are going, Wondering when we, the hell we're going to wake up and stop being a problem to society. Mm -hmm. Because we're really in dishonor of our mothers and fathers, which is one of the bases upon which we get mistreated. Because we're outside the human family, by choice. As far as the world's concerned, because you, you're responsible, and you're not excused from the law, because the law begins with yourself. And every human being on this planet is required by both divine law and civil law to honor their mothers and fathers. And we're the only one people who keep running around talking about human beings are crayons. And then when the world rejects us, we're going to accuse them of racism when race is the human species. They can't even damn read. See the problem? And they'll argue with you because that's a connotative application. But race is the species. Race is not the attitude. They, don't, they can't even damn read. And then they'll argue with you to defend it because they pay a lot of black leaders to keep pushing that stuff. And they don't know that they're co-intel prerogatives. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Because they cousins and they Reverend Jones and, mm -hmm. and they really think these people are working for them. They're working for Rome. You, you know what I mean? But you can't tell them because we operate from emotions uh, and uh, we don't deal with facts. We deal with beliefs. So when you show our people facts, they start, oh, that's your opinion. No, that's the mass. That's the fact. Now, I'll just we're going to go through this real quick, right? Watch this. So we, we know that black's an adjective, so immediately any scholar knows that if it's an adjective, it's not a person, place, thing, or idea. And if it's applied to humans, it's a nom de gear or brand. All right, I mean, you, before you go into definition, you know that, right? But let's look and let's go into what is called, as words develop, they create compounds, right? And they know that these people were branded black, right? Mm -hmm. So look in the same dictionary, right? Right here, what's that word? And it breaks it down. Read it. It's black and, black and more. All right. And it's broken down and separated, ain't it? Yes, sir. And then it was a noun, isn't it? Yes, sir. So if black's an adjective, why is it now a noun? Because it's separating the word and it's showing you that what? Noun. 
Any dark-skinned person, especially an African Negro, earlier black more, and then black in all solid case, which shows you that it is what? When it has all even case numbers, it's showing you that this is a corporate nom de gear construct. Here, capital M, small o, small o, r, here all even case, and it says black plus more, earlier form of more. And so these people who call themselves black are Moors, it's right there in the dictionary, they can't even damn read it. And you show it to half of them, they start talking about some kind of religious belief. So what does a civilized world, um, what do they do with a person like that when they don't even know themselves but talking trash? But they're all brother or sister, you know, you can't walk down the street after 10 of you got jewelry and stuff on, you know what I mean? I mean, let's be real. So if we want to really solve problems, we got to start be honest with ourselves. You know, like if, if I got a boogie in my nose, don't let me sit down at the dinner and everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, man, you looking, you're all right, man, yeah, you know. Exactly. You know, it's, come on, man, go blow your nose. Mm -hmm. People sitting here eating, you know. And, and after a while, and this is an exaggeration, but in many ways, culturally, you know, people get to the point because they know how sensitive we are. They don't say anything. They just let us make asses out of ourselves. But they reject us also in the process. Then we get insulted and we feel dissed. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that we are out of order. This is one thing to know when you're out of order. It's another thing when you don't know. Because we've been so far away from culture, we forgot culture. We forgot that it is we who civilized them. They'll make them statements, but we don't live what we keep saying. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll talk about ancient African gods and kings and rulers, and then we act like absolute hood rats mm -hmm. in the process. Jurisprudence, the Moors took it to Europe during the Renaissance, brought them out of the Dark Ages. You bring law dictionaries to our people, and into that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It don't say Jesusness. You tell me they don't do that because they absolutely do. But you're worried about how you're going to do it. And it's their it. own stuff. <laughs> and then they'll turn around and complain because we keep getting screwed because we can't read. Mm -hmm. And don't know that law and history goes together. But anyway, let's, so let's, so as you can see here, the people who claim to be black, and you notice how they deliberately separated it, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. And it's a noun, isn't it? Yep. So that black and more is a noun, black's an adjective. They show a compound word, separate the adjective from the noun, mm -hmm. classify it properly, and now any dark-skinned person didn't even say, well, some of them that lives over here and mm -hmm. some poor mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. If you dark, complex, you got melon, you're more. Mm -hmm. Period. Across the planet. Then half the people, including scholars, should start talking about this a belief. As simple as what I just said to you is what Malcolm found out. That's what that French Muslim had to school him when he went over there and made the hives and started that black and white stuff in that French Muslim school. And it's because you made the hives. Don't call that white and black stuff. That's slave language. You think Maghrib's a prayer for Wednesday. Maghrib is North America. Morocco, the most extreme West. You left home. That's why when Malcolm came back, he understood enemies was on both sides. You know, and, and, and it's really, and keep in mind, what I just demonstrated to you is part of the Edomon degree when you get past the problem book and you get into what you call the chambers of Adams. That most brothers and sisters, like in the nation, like your, your, your regular, um, you know, MGTs and fruit, don't even have this information. It's available to them after they pass the problem book, you know, and so you can understand this corner where your heart is. Why even Clarence, who set up God's in earth, why he left, why Malcolm left, why Wallace, Elijah's son even left, why John Muhammad left. It's going to where your heart is. You know, because when you find out the truth, when you find out your your people is being played, your, your conscience kind of hits you. Some people take the finance and run some more. You know, so this is why Il Malik became dangerous to them, because they knew he was going to tell. He had to re be retort himself in due time, so they bumped him off before he could, because they couldn't buy him off. Now, people from the outside, when they see the you know movie Malcolm X, they get they get an opinion that's presented in the general media. 
those who really know what's up, as like myself, because I was assistant minister in the nation, those who really know what's up, you know, because most of the uh, big shots in the nation was my friends, you know. I got pictures of Muhammad Ali over my boy, Hannibal, when he was a baby on the porch. Joe Tex, all singers, I didn't know them all. I already know that when you're amongst those who really know their conversations is different than they are when, you know, you're in front of the believer type thing, you know, they, and I'm not knocking any of them, I'm just telling you, when you grow up, you, you, you're not dealing with belief systems, you deal with real politics. But because most people aren't willing to handle it, they don't usually talk to them because they get emotional. I mean, you saw like Jack Nicholson said in a couple of movies, say, you, you know, the people don't want to know the truth, they can't handle the truth. What they're really mm -hmm. saying, it's not that they can't handle it, they don't want it. They talk about it, but they don't want it. You know, it's like people saying, you know, how come nobody comes in the community and help the brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and tell us the truth about our history and blah, blah, blah. I just showed you right there. And we ain't even been here a few minutes. So if these people don't know their morals, how they want to know their history? And then if you promote black, you're putting them right back in the Christian black codes, and then the codes fly, they get all screwed, and they wonder why we can't develop. And then we keep having meetings, rallies, doing things like this, films, and talking about pyramids and the great gods of Egypt and everything, and then they start trying to take that black stuff and make it retroactive, which immediately they're lying. And all scholars know that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But scholars aren't excused because all scholars get an Edamon degree. You must qualify if they have a title. This is why people outside of our communities don't have too much respect for black people because they know we sell outs. But they know most of the people don't have the intelligence to recognize a sellout. They go by their emotions, how they feel about them, not what they know, how they feel about them. Always emotions, no facts. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, um, so I just wanted to show you that, mm -hmm. right? So take a position like you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then see how easy it is to first bring a person to a consciousness of themselves. Right. You don't have to try to convince them. Give them documents. Now, from here on in, if you continue in the civilized world to claim to be black, you willingly gave up your birthright, and by law, they have a right to do anything to you that they want to do to you. Because you're outside the human family, by choice. Now, put yourself in another people's shoes. Now, you know very often we've been taken advantage of. I mean, it is mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. But when you understand this, you can understand why people, other people that sometimes confuses our people, why they don't like black people. They don't trust us. Because anybody that don't recognize their own bloodline can't be trusted. But our people who think it's an identity don't know that that's part of what that rejection is. They think part that rejection is what they have been trained as racism when it's actually rejection of people who are in dishonor and keep defending that dishonor and ignorance, which damages the world. But they don't see it that way. They just we just looking from the point that we're being put upon. That's like like me trying to sell you here. You know, I'm going, yeah, man. Because I got this. Uh, we got these pit bulls here. You know, they got their shots and everything. It's night blues and stuff like that, right? And we 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 giving you a deal. Right? <laughs> we usually want like seven, eight hundred for them. Mm -hmm. On the low end, you know, but we're gonna give you a deal. We're gonna give you a two or three, right? Come on, doggy. Mm -hmm. Put the dog up here. Yeah, you got this sale thing on. Go ahead, dog, do your thing. He goes, meow. <laughs> this is the way the world looks at us, calling ourselves Smith, Jones, and Johnson. And we don't see it. We think they're busting on us when they're looking at us as phony. But we, by not knowing basic etymology, we don't know that that's the major part of their approach to us. Now let's just, now I showed you an ordinary dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to a law dictionary, right? And then you'll see people, you know, in the name of scholarship, mm -hmm. talking about, so yeah, and we people of color, like we just said something deep and spiritual, right? This is really Afrocentric. And you know, people of color need to be treated with respect and, and all those stuff. And, and wonder why people still reject us, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to law dictionary. We're talking about available reading, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
And then look how, how simple the stuff is. Now, check this out, good brother. Now, this is the law dictionary of law. Now, we have definitions of the terms. Is that identification? It says term, right? Terms and phrases of American and English jurisprudence, ancient and modern. So they can't get out of this, can they? Mm. Nope. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go look at color. Now, with most of our people who can't read, they, they've been told by their black leader guys, <laughs> color coalition, people of color, and people need to recognize the feathers and we somebody and everything because we people of color are spiritual. And the rest of the world looking at us like, yeah. And then we feel this, right? Let's see, now here it is. Now let's look at this. Color. By common usage in America. Does it say in the world? Common uses in America. Same thing the Frenchman told Il Malik. Mm -hmm. That people know as Malcolm. Right? This term, does it say identity? Mm -hmm. It says this term, which is color, in such phrases as quote unquote colored persons, quote unquote the colored race, quote unquote colored man, and the like is used to designate. Does it say identify? It says designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry, right? But where a state constitution provided for separate schools for the white and colored races, the term, it says term, quote unquote white race, was held to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term colored races to embrace all other races, right? It has also been held that there is no legal, technical significance to the phrase colored person which the courts are bound judicially to know. They're telling you it's a fraud. That's why nobody recognizes colored people, because it's a fraud, it's a brand. So when you come talking about freedom and liberties in a brand, you're a subject. You're another man's property. You ain't got no business talking trash. And our people have been told that that's spiritual commitment development <laughs> of Hotep. Don't they? And defend it. Now, so let's look at color. So now that's color. That's, and they show you the term that's used in all the different phrases. They, they cut every way it was used. Socially, didn't they? So the people can't even say that that they can't understand that. They can say they ain't read it. They can't say they can't understand it if they would read. But you have to understand educated people around the world just know these things. This is just, this is basic education. So you already know the difficulty they must have trying to communicate with us, and we keep trying to be crayons. Do you understand? So let's look at color. Color. An appearance, a semblance, or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. A prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. So what do you think when you be caught going out in the world calling yourself we people of color and then looking for respect? Because we was told by some marching, praying, Negro leader guy that is so Afrocentric identity, and you just told the world that you are fake. Accept me. And then when you get rejected, you want to accuse them of racism. You see how obvious that is? Is that complex? Is it hard to understand? But you know, and I know, most of our people in, who, who claim to read and claim to be scholars don't know it and don't speak of it and try to defend it as if it's an identity. So imagine in your mind the difficulty it puts other people in to come in our communities and deal with us. They don't, they don't have no choice but to just set up a business because they can't do anything reasonable with us because we're going to get all emotional. We're going to be one thing one day, another thing another day. Let me show you something else. Let me show you something else. 
Dictionary, right? Here we go, watch this. So here we go, troglodyte, right? Mm -hmm. Troglodyte, mm -hmm. a prehistoric cave dweller. So as you can see, the anthropoid or the chimpanzees, the monkeys, gorilla species, anthropoid species, scientific name is troglodyte. And in some dictionaries will give you troglodyte nigger. That's where that comes from, because the nigger is an ape, all right? So troglodyte, a prehistoric cave dweller. Now, are, people, are our people the cave people? I think we can be safe to say that, right? right? All right, all right. So a prehistoric cave dweller, a person likened to a caveman, as in reclusiveness or brutishness. Latin, troglodyte, or troglodyta from the Greek, troglodytos, singular of troglodyte, or variant influence of troglo, uh, troglos cave, and... Um, uh, Daitoa, those who enter, that's troglodytes, name of, um, and then they see how they add it, name of Ethiopian people, so they add it, so they put that to us, when it's actually the European. Mm -hmm. And like you can take a, uh, like a, an Oscar dictionary, and it will tell you hybrid is European, and say we English at best are but hybrids. But the point that I'm making is to you, and this is the point that I'm making to you, our people throw the word nigger around like it's an identity, don't know that they're telling the world they're a monkey. Mm -hmm. And they use it as a term of endearment and think it's cool. I mean, it's all right if that's what you want to be. But you can't get angry when someone treats you like you're outside the human family because you're telling them that you're right. an ape. Right. And then they treat you with that disrespect and then you want to get pissed. Because you can't damn read. Do you understand the problem that we have? It's really, you know, it's really interesting. And, you, you know, just like, and, and as we're talking, and it's because we're open in conversation. But most people ain't open to this conversation because they don't want to deal with facts. They get angry. It doesn't meet their beliefs because they don't deal with facts. Don't come with the facts. You want an argument? You want to go to hell and have, you know, fire and brimstone? Start talking facts. I just asked somebody that too. I said, where is hell to you? Like, do you think that you just, they put you in the ground and your body just absorbs down into the earth and down into fire and brimstone? No, 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 Shows you why people don't have respect for people who keep claiming to be black. And we be getting sensitive thinking that they off on us. They dissing us. And they're only being honest with us because we're out of order. You can't go to the grand party farting and expect people, not, you know, to embrace you like you got <laughs> Aramis on or something. I mean, this is what we do. Um, now, sis. Um, now, you already know, and this is back to connotative linguistics. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means what people think, they know that what we think we read and that we don't know what this what we're talking about. So they allow us to soak in our ignorance. <laughs> now, all right. The name formally given to a place under the exterior chamber where the king's debitors were confined. Rich did. So 90% of our people are in the penance church. Black codes, penitentiary as debtors, aren't they? Mm. They don't even know that hell is the condition they're in. Mm. And they think it's a place to go. They can't even <laughs> read. <laughs> but yet they'll see and say, yeah, man, 90% of prisoners is black people. Damn, they in hell. No, they ain't going to go to hell if they don't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, they in hell. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. They can't even they damn read. Mm -hmm. And then when you tell them this stuff, they think that you're making this stuff that's up. Right. And it's a debtor's prison, and that's connected it's, to the That's what hell is. is. Under the Spanish Inquisition, under church conquest of the Western Hemisphere, colonial operations that our people keep calling racism. Mm -hmm. And the Federal Reserve is our debt. That's, what, that's why they got the, What is the IRS? Inquisition Revenue Services. Thomas D. What? 
Tana D. Uh, Go ahead. Torquemada. Torquemada. The Torquemada. And is what produced again with Woodrow Wilson to counter Nova Dwali between 1910 and 1913. He met with the representatives of the bankers of England, representatives of the Pope of Jekyll Island, and created the artificial operations of the Inquisition taxing of Rome under the internal revenue services and put the people in hell. In order to begin to understand how our financial system works, we need to go back to the early 1900s, 1910 to be exact. Everyone at some point in their lives has heard of the Federal Reserve, but most likely don't understand what it is or how it works. The Federal Reserve, referred to as the Fed, is a central bank that many economists refer to as the biggest robbery ever enacted on the American people. The reason for this is because the Federal Reserve is neither part of the federal government, nor does it have any reserves. Yet, this single organization controls the money supply of the most powerful country in the world. The Fed is very diligent in hiding the fact that they are not part of the government. The last thing they want the American people to fully understand is that our government does not control our own money. In order to achieve this, they were very clever and decided to call their institution the Federal Reserve. And by labeling themselves this way, the general public never thought twice about who was in control of the country's money supply. If the Federal Reserve is not part of the government, then who controls this private organization and how did this come to be? The answer to this question is what changed the course of our country forever. In November of 1910, a secret meeting took place of six bankers and economic policymakers who represented the financial elite of the Western world. It was hosted at the J.P. Morgan Estate on Jekyll Island in Georgia. In attendance was Senator Nelson W. Aldrich, Abram Pyatt Andrew Jr., Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, Frank Vanderlip, President of National City Bank of New York, Henry P. Davidson, Senior Partner of J.P. Morgan & Company, Charles D. Norton, President of First National Bank of New York. Paul Warburg, Director of Wells Fargo. Benjamin Strong, the emissary for J.P. Morgan and, coincidentally, the first president of the Federal Reserve. Years later, Frank Vanderlip referred to this meeting as the actual conception of what eventually became the Federal Reserve System. This meeting was so secret at the time that not even the names of those who attended were mentioned to the servants who lived and worked on the island. The men who attended came on a late night train, claiming to be on their way to a hunting expedition, but instead, these bankers met with Senator Nelson Aldrich to draft what would eventually become the Federal Reserve Act. This private meeting attended by some of the most powerful men in America was strategically designed to take control of our country's money supply and to achieve ultimate power in America. Meyer Amshed Rothschild, one of the most powerful European bankers of his time, stated it best when he said, Permit me to issue and control the money of the nation, and I care not who makes its laws. On December 23, 1913, two days before Christmas, when most people in Congress were home with their families, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson. That single act, however small it may seem, transferred the control of our monetary system from our government into the hands of some of the wealthiest men in our country. Putting into law the Federal Reserve Act gave unlimited power to a few wealthy banking institutions in America. The Fed has the power to issue currency, manipulate interest rates, and run secret bailouts. Yet Congress and the President are not allowed full oversight over this powerful organization. The Federal Reserve enjoys a monopoly over the creation of our nation's money and credit, but for 100 years, they have never been completely transparent and accountable about it. And we don't have to look back too far from today to see what it looks like in real life. When testifying before Congress in 2009, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke refused to disclose which institutions received trillions of dollars in these bailouts and loans or give our representatives details about what deals were being made. So my question to you is, 
Will you tell the American people to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars? Will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Will you tell us who they are? No. In an interview with Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner, he makes the stunning assertion that conducting a full audit of the Federal Reserve, something never before done in its 100-year history, is a line that we don't want to cross. To be denied full transparency of these transactions after U.S. taxpayers contributed over $16 trillion to these bailouts and loans is unthinkable and unconstitutional. It is our right as American citizens to know where our money is being spent. It's very ironic that if you don't give the IRS full transparency with your finances, you go to jail. But if you're a private organization of elite bankers that controls the money supply of a country, you're free to do as you please without full oversight. This private organization is arrogant in the fact that the same accounting laws that apply to the rest of America do not apply to them. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Their control appears to be unlimited, and 2008 is the most recent example of how much power the Fed actually has on our country. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or 3,000 points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. The elite banking institutions took trillions of dollars worth of risk, and when they lost their bets, they threatened politicians to use taxpayer money to bail them out, or else we would face an Armageddon type of scenario. This historic change of power in America is again why many economists refer to it as the biggest robbery ever enacted on the American people. And there was this then where they, whether they destroy your families and then what, put the men in, in, in jail if they don't have a job to support their family with resources that was taken from them and they're put in hell, debtor's prison. So just having one of these. Everything totally anti constitutional. Right. You're in hell, just right. having one of these. So I just want to show you that as an example. So, so here we are, so here we are in the studio just talking. But the reason why I had you come over here because I want to show you how simple this stuff yes, is. is. Right. And we can, we can go into other questions, but imagine this, when the average person even got degrees in school, don't even know this basic stuff, and they got a lot of opinions, and it doesn't make them insincere in the heart, they don't know. They can't read. And then their leader guys, they don't know that they're calling telephone operatives who's there as overseers to keep them in this black game that is a brand system and they think it's an identity system. And so they defend their own enslavement. And so this is why it's often said when people talk about our people and they say they are, are slaves by consent. And then a lot of times we start marching and praying and protesting the community and every once in a while Europeans will get frustrated and they'll you know, get brave enough, they'll step back enough because they know we, we can roll, you know, and they say, why don't you stop messing with us? Why don't you go back to your black leaders keep selling y'all back in slavery? And then, oh, you racist. And he could be telling you absolute truth. Because they know what these people can't damn read. But they're arrogant. It's, it's one thing to be ignorant. It's another thing to be ignorant and arrogant with it. Then nobody can't tell you nothing. So when they can't tell you nothing, people don't have much conscience taking it. That's why they don't have much conscience taking advantage of us in our communities. Because the ignorance that exists in our communities really is inexcusable. It really is inexcusable, although we will make excuses. But I wanted to show you that to just show you just absolutely how easy it is to educate some, you know, but what? take a position like you don't know how easy it is. And we've been in here, what, eating food and talking a little <laughs> bit in, in real in real research, it ain't even research. Remember, we haven't even done what you call basic, you know, real deep scholarship. What we did is go in the dictionary. And if we can get that much out of the dictionary, how much you can get if you do some real research? And then what else if you just take that basic what you learn to the average person, 
even in this building, mm -hmm. most of them will what? Reject what you're saying as if you're attacking their belief. All right? So that's a lesson, right? <laughs> Now immediately, most of our people don't even know the connection. Because they don't know that they're Moors. So he's telling them and they don't know their history. They think he's talking some dean assistant who's got no birth certificate there. You know? And that's the bandwagon they'll jump on. And he's telling them your history and go right to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and the founding of the United States, of which they're part, and they don't even recognize it because they don't know they're Moors. The president's even in town. So what do you do with people like this? That's what they play with King Alfred for them. Same people in the Second World War that kept claiming to be somebody if they're not, they're going to cook them. That's what King Alfred is. Because they're going to get me to this British nigga problem one way or another because it's destroying the planet. <laughs>